James Pringles here with another video. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're discussing more Cypher System. I know, crazy, right? But honestly, I did want to just bring up the mechanics side of things. We did talk about a little bit of that, but I really want to delve a bit deeper because one of the beauties of the Cypher System is the mechanics and how simple they are. Before we get into that though, I just wanted to congratulate Neil a day for winning my competition. So you can either obviously pick from Mythic Odyssey or Theros or Zalatel's Guide to Everything. That is completely up to you. Please get in contact with me. All right, let's cue the intro screen. Before we get on to the topic, I would suggest checking out my video over here. Um, and a big thank you to the Sci-Fi Unlimited crew. Check them out on their Discord or their YouTube channel. Links in the description below. I did mention in last week that I am very much of the story first, rules later. However, I did want to take this opportunity and say that the rules of the cyber system is a really good sweet spot there. So it doesn't have too many rules and mechanics where it gets really long-winded, bogged down the rules and you have to look them up all the time. But it's not too few where there's no structure at all and it's just complete chaos. And I think that's the really the beauty of it is that sweet spot right in the middle there. What I mean by that is that beautiful 0 to 10 task difficulty scale where we can apply that to anywhere. It's a bit undefined where we apply it to, but we can apply that to every single thing. We can apply it to a trap that the players have to overcome, a monster, or a NPC that has to sneak past, or even something that they have to convince their way into a party. And that's just that difficulty scale. We work out how difficult the NPC, the trap, the monster is going to be, and that works out all the rest for it. And that's just a really good, beautiful part of the system. And the versatility of the effort and edge system is fantastic and I cannot love that enough because at the end of the day we can decide how much effort we want to put in for this task. It's something we have to pass, we're probably going to put effort in. If it's something that doesn't really matter to our characters, we're probably not going to put effort in. And that just gives the players so much agency to take control of their character. And I did speak about this last week, video over here, uh, about the player intrusion just gives even more player agency and I just think that's fantastic. So we're going to talk about actually playing the cypher system now and we're going to talk about reducing that difficulty like we spoke earlier. So you can reduce the difficulty through a number of ways. One is using effort, one is using an asset, and then another way is if you're skilled in that skill. So we're going to talk about spending points from pools and using effort to sneak past that guard, for example of a level 3 guard. So to do this, you might be tier 2, so you can put two levels of effort, but you might only want to put one. And what you can do to do this is you would spend points from your speed pool to put effort in. So that level 3 guard, if you put one level of effort, will reduce it to a difficulty 2. So instead of rolling a 9 now, you only have to roll a 6. But that's going to cost you 3 points from your speed pool. But if you are tier 2, you might want to put 2 levels of, in, of effort in. So it's 3 for the first level and 2 for the additional one. So that makes 5 points in total from your speed pool. And that's reduced it from a 3 to a 1, so instead of rolling that 9 now, you only have to roll a 3. And you might also have an asset, like some boots that help you sneak, or someone might be helping you sneak as well, but giving you directions where not to step on the loud rocks or twigs, and that's going to give you an asset to reduce it even again. So that level 3 guard now, with the two levels of effort, you've reduced that to a 3, but you've got the asset from your sneaky boots, or someone helping you sneak, and that is going to reduce it to a 0. So now, that level 3 guard, you don't even need to roll, you just succeed. Let's use that guard example one more time now, and we're going to use only one level of effort, but you're now trained in stealth. So, that level 3, you're trained in it, so that reduces the difficulty by one step, making it down to a 2. And then you're going to put effort in, so that makes it down to a 1. And you've still got your sneaky boots on, so that reduces it down to a 0 again. So that's another way to reduce the difficulty as well. But you might be specialised in speed tasks, so you might be really good at being really quick and agile, so you might have an edge in speed. So what this means is this reduces the cost from your speed pool. So now if you have an edge, if you have an edge of one, um, we're going to use that guard example one more time, uh, is you're going to try and sneak past, you're going to put two levels of effort, usually it would cost a five, but you've got an edge. So now it only costs you four points from your speed pool. In the cypher system you have pools instead of stats. And the reason they're called pools is there are points that you can spend, like that previous example of a guard, sneaking past them. You have a might, and speed and intellect pool. Now it is a bit of a resource management about spending those points because you can spend them on putting effort in so you can help with your skill checks or effort to attack um, or abilities as well will come from that as well as your hit points. So when you take damage it usually comes from your might pool first then your speed and then once that's zero it'll come from your intellect and once all three are zero that's how you die. So it is very much of a resource management because you can spend points from your pools from abilities 
I'm putting effort in doing skills and also attacks, but also obviously like damage as well. So when one of your pawns becomes zero, whether it's because you're spensable or you've taken damage, you become impaired. And what that means is all your effort costs extra points. And then after two pawns become zero, then you become debilitated. And what that means is that you can't move unless it's your mind and your intellect that um, is zero, and your intellect, you can take intellect damage if it's like a mind attack or something like that. So when you're debilitated, you can't really move like, unless you've still got speed points left. Um, but it's kind of like being unconscious. You can kind of scream out for help or a medic, but you can't really do much more than that. So when it comes to recovering those points, what we need to do is a recovery roll. You get four recovery rolls a day, which is a d6 plus your tier. And the first one takes an action, then the second recovery roll takes 10 minutes, then an hour, and then 10 hours. So what that does mean is if you have a 10 hour rest, you're not necessarily going to get all your hit points back, depending on how much you've lost and how well you've rolled. And I think that is perfectly reasonable, because most of us, if we go into a big fight or we fall off a roof, it's going to take a couple of days for us to recover and feel back to normal anyway. Out of all the different TTRPGs I've looked at, the skills in Cypher System are really different and, and I really like how they're different though, don't get me wrong, but they're just a bit strange to get your head around to begin with in my opinion. So there are both broad and narrow skills. What I mean by, by broad and narrow is if you were an appealing character for example, you would be trained in positive social interactions and maybe later on you take the skill or take more training in persuasion. So what this means is that you are skilled in persuasion but you're also skilled in positive social interaction. So really you're specialized in uh, persuasion and only skilled in other um, positive social interactions such as flirting, seduction, uh, charm, or, or that sort of thing. But I think that's really fun. It takes a bit of a thinking to get your head around to begin with, but it's, it's interesting, to say the least. The other thing with skills is that there's no real set skills in Cypher. And that sounds crazy, but I, I love this, because playing d d if someone wants to cook a meal for someone, is that survival? Or is that more history, because they're remembering a recipe? And I'm not really sure where that falls under, but you don't have that problem with Cypher, because skills are whatever you need them to be. So if someone wants to learn cooking, they can do that, and they just write cooking on their sheet. You don't have to have this, where does it fall in that category? And you can have really, really narrow, so you might have something like you're good at backflips, specifically, not just acrobatics. And I think that's kind of cool to have that wide range, you don't have to find where things fit into those scales, like in D&D 5e, and I just think that's really fun. I've talked already a little bit in this video and the previous one about descriptors, types, and focus, and this is all part of character creation. I'm not going to go too in depth here, but I just want to brush over that real quickly. So you pick a descriptor which describes the character and gives you a few little extra bonus such as chaotic, doomed, empathetic, appealing, fast, agile, and this gives you a few little things. So agile are probably going to give you something speed based. If you pick smart, you're going to have something intellect based. Hard is going to give you something more physical based. But then you also pick your type, which is kind of like a class. So in Cypher there is the warrior, which is your classic kind of fighter sort of thing. Then you've got your adept, which is kind of like your wizard. Your Traveller, um, I'm not really sure where that fits into like D&D conversion, but it's kind of like the Jack of All Trades kind of character. They're not really strong necessarily, um, and they're not really fast, but they're kind of good at everything. They're kind of the Traveller, I guess. And then you have the Speaker, which is your classic charisma character, the Bard, or Sister. Uh, that's all about persuading people. So that's the types there, and then you've got the Focuses. Now I did, I did go over Focuses a little bit more depth in the last video, so check that out. Um, but yeah, it focuses what your character is best at and nobody can do like you can do. So the example I used in the last video was Rise the Lightning, so you might have lightning powers and nobody can use lightning powers like you can. There might be others using it, but not the same way you can. Now the Cypher system gets its name from ciphers, which are like one use magical items, so like a spell scroll or a magic potion, and it's a powerful artifact, or well, sorry, I shouldn't use artifact because artifacts are different. It's a powerful magic item, might not be magic if you're not using a fantasy setting, might be old tech that no one understands. It has one use. So some of them would be, cool, I heal myself. Some of them could be, oh, I can jump now, or I can fly for 10 minutes, um, and things like that. And then an artifact is a multiple use cipher, I guess, and you have a depletion roll. So every time you use that artifact, you roll, might be a 1 and 6, and if you get a 1, that artifact dies, it stops working, it breaks. 
or some of the other ones might have a 1 in 10 or 1 in 100. If you do want more information about the Cypher system, I would head to Monty Cook Games. Um, they are the seller of and the publisher of the Cypher system. Otherwise, you can also check out Angel's Citadel blog. They are a great group of people and go check them out as well. There's a lot of information on how to run the Cypher system there as well. If you have any feedback for me or what I should do next, or even just something fun you're working on you want to share, feel free to put that in the comments below. I'd love to read it. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please like, subscribe, and share the video to your friends. If you don't have any friends, just share it to your enemies or the people you hate. Honestly, the more people watching my videos, the better for me. You can find me on the usual social media places. I've got Twitter. Uh, I'm very active on Twitter. I'm at SpringsDM. Check me out there. Instagram is GM Sprinkles. And then I've got a Facebook page, which is also GM Sprinkles. All that will be in the link below. Check me out there if you want to know what's going on. Snippets of what's going to happen in my next video. General advice, whether it's helpful or not, is another story. But yeah, just check me out there if you're interested. Have a lovely day. Keep rolling those dice, but don't let them define you.